Welcome to the Valley College Connection, where John Kawai and Scott Wigan, two Valley professors, engage in a conversation about success with educators and students. Each week, they'll sit down with a different guest to find out ways each of us have had to plan, persevere, and overcome to where we are now. The show will also highlight resources and services that are working to make a difference at Valley College. We are joined today by Marty Garcia Figueroa, former Valley College student. Thank you so much for joining us today, Marty. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. We're excited too. Um, as far as sort of where to start, uh, we'd like to start at the beginning. If you could share with us, uh, you know, ultimately the path that led you here to Valley College, but take it as far back as you'd like to. Um, let us know what your experience was like from, from getting started with school. You could start with elementary, high school, pick us up to Valley, share as much as you'd like. Oh, wow. Um, okay, well, I'm, um... I'm a first time generation college student. So I wanna start off by saying that I wasn't cut with the silver spoon. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't, I had no cookie cutter life, that's for sure. Education was definitely not a conversation that was brought up in my home. I mean, we talked about it cause kinda, you know, you gotta send your kids to school. And that was pretty much as far as the conversation went. My parents, um, I grew up in um in a Mexican household, so we had enchiladas and tamales and a bunch of Mexican awesome food. Um, but my parents noticed um, a gift uh, for music and for the arts very early on in my life. And, you know, that's why that was always the pursuit. And since they saw a gift at a very young age, that's the route that I decided to take instead of education. And that's something that I always relied on. That was something that I was always great at doing. That road led me to the music industry where I worked with very successful people. And, you know, I got to tour um, with a lot of famous people. And I really had, I had an amazing opportunity to pretty much excel and make a bunch of money, make a bunch of relationships and only to find myself that the Lord, and when I mean the Lord, my God, took me out of that industry at a certain point in my life. And well, well let, know, me, let me cut you off a little bit there. What yes. were you actually doing in the music industry? Were you were you singing or doing production? I was I was doing pretty much everything. Uh, I was definitely my my main my main drive was singing. I was doing backgrounds. I did backgrounds for Michael Jackson, um, you know, before he passed away. Um, I toured with Well I Am and the Black Eyed Peas. Um, I opened up for, you know, the Pussycat Dolls and I I, I shared many stages with Avril Lavigne and Gwen Stefani. I mean, it was it was really an amazing journey. And I'm very blessed to even have walked in those shoes and walked amongst the great, you know, the greatest of the great. Um, but like I said, it was only for me to be led a different way, which, in fact, was to Valley College, which was that which is crazy. But it, it's true. Well, how did you get started in the music business? I um uh, my my like I said my my parents saw you know just a a natural gift for music um at a very young age you know dancing and being able to pick up choreography you know beyond my years um was was some you know was something that they noticed so they you know I became a Boston Celtics dancer you know I, as as I went to college uh, as I went to school I'm sorry as I went to high school and I, I just could, every time that I got myself in front of any type of music that I would always kind of shine bright like a diamond, as they say, you know, it was something that was very natural for me. And, um, and it was something that, that, you know, kind of one step, one door led to another, and then another door led to another. And that kind of just, you know, the relationships kind of built in that, in that way. So you kind of had, had the it then? I, yeah, I guess the it changes these days, you know, the it changes from time to time. It's never the it, but yeah, I guess at some point, you know, I did have the it and um, I was flattered, but I really, I realized that the it goes away and, um, you know, and then you kind of can't rely on, you know, your looks or, you know, your body or, you know, all that, all that fun stuff, that success and fame and all that, uh, you know, magazines and all that Photoshop comes with. Uh, you have to like really have a brain, you know, behind it all. and. 
I couldn't rely on my arts anymore at some point in my life. And that's what, that's what really, 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 um, that's what really was like a reality check for me, which I had to find another way because God wanted me out of that industry. He did. And then how did you come to that understanding? Well, I really came to the point where, um, it, it started, uh, it started not becoming, I came to the point where it wasn't challenging for me. I think it became like, okay, I'm done. Like, this is cool. Whatever. Um, it, I kind of started having like a bitter attitude towards it. And, um, and I started realizing that I would, it wasn't about the art and the creative flow of it for me anymore. It wasn't about the love for it. It was really just more about being strategic. And, you know, I started just, I found myself in a really, in a really empty place. And then I, you know, I, I was an atheist and I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in a higher power. And I was just like, yeah, whatever, you know, it's, it's cool, whatever. Everything is great. Um, but really it was really truly dying inside and I needed to find myself. Um, I needed to find myself full and full is when I pretty much, I, I went to church. I, I started going to church. I started finding my inner strength. I started finding what God wanted for me. And I, he started filling me in a different way. And that's when I knew that I needed to make a change in my life. And it, if it meant letting everything that I knew go, then that's what it meant. And that's what it meant doing. And that's what I did. And then how, how, how were you brought to this church? I mean, what was it's, it's, it feels like it was, there was this dramatic, was it a dramatic change or was it something that was slowly growing in you? I think it was a dramatic change for sure. Uh, I, I, when I was, I think the last tour that I was a part of, I was just kind of going with the motions of life. I don't know if anybody's ever felt that way where you kind of just feel like you're on autopilot and you're just like, yeah, whatever. Um, and that's kind of how I felt the last. And yeah, I probably maybe, maybe it seemed like a gradual, like a gradual loneliness or a gradual emptiness. I don't, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but it was, it had to be dramatic when I cut it off. It had to be that dramatic where it was like, you know what? I have to make a choice. It's either yes or no, or, or I'm done or I have to keep going. So that's when I made the choice. And I said, you know, that I have to stop this because I have to see if this is really what I want to do and I want to pursue, or if this is something if, or God's leading me a different way. And, uh, and, and it took a while for me to, to find that, but it had to be like a dramatic cutoff for me to find my way. Marty, were you, um, when you had this sort of, uh, you know, insight, where, where were you at at this point? You'd mentioned earlier that you, you know, danced with the Boston Celtics and then had this really amazing, you know, career in the music industry. Were you located in, in Los Angeles or? where physically or geographically where were you well i was i was born in in a small town in texas so i was born in el paso texas and then my parents moved moved at a young age i was like six uh, we moved to boston massachusetts where i spent most of my years i spent almost 20 23 years there so i went to elementary school went to high school and um i even attended berkeley school of music where at that time, um, I literally trans, I, I left Berkeley and then I became a Boston Celtics dancer full time. And, uh, and that was, and so after that, um, I traveled to New York, I traveled to Atlanta, you know, I kind of was like, you know, I mean, I guess in the industry, you always have to travel. So that was something that I always did only to find myself that I had a lot of work in LA, which was California. And I decided to relocate there and, you know, I had all, all my jobs were there and um, the people that I was working with were, were stationed there. So I was very highly encouraged to just to make the move. And I did, I, I made the move by myself and, and I, and I loved it. I loved it for, for, for the beginning times. So how were you able to explain to your family and friends and agent that you were going to make this, this shift in life? It was probably the hardest decision of my life because I had so many people um, supporting me um, and, you know, supporting me in, in the most loving way that you can possibly support somebody, including my family. Um, it was devastating for everybody. Um, you know, I was the one I was like, you know, you know, the one that's going to make it for the family. You know, it was it, I was looked at that. You know, I like I said, I come from a small town and, you know, big, fancy, fancy, fancy 
dreams like that, you know, aren't flowing around from where I come from. So it was a big deal. Um, it was the scariest and the most fearful thing that I've ever done in my life because um, to see the heartbreaks on the people you love is not something that you take lightly, you know, but at the same time, you know, I had to make a choice of saying, am I living for everybody else or am I living for myself? Because that's something that people that really, truly love me are going to have to understand. And those people surfaced. The people that truly love me and really, really, really cared about Marty, the, the woman that God made, understood, even though it was heartbreaking for them, they understood and they supported me throughout any journey that I decided to be on. But the people that really didn't care about me and only saw me as a paycheck or only saw me as something that would benefit their life dropped off like flies. So it was a nice indication of who was really to stick around for the long run. Sure. So, so then what happened next after you, after you decided to quit singing? Well, okay. So I exited out of that only to only in faith uh, to know that God was by my side throughout the Brock bottom and throughout what exactly was to come. And I met my husband. Um, I fell in love. We got married. I had children. And when I had, when I had my first daughter, that's when, that's when it hit me. That's when it said, okay, I left a really successful industry. I left the fancy, I left the rich and the famous and the beautiful cars and the beautiful materialistic things only to hit, to be at this four walls of my one bedroom apartment. And I looked around and I said, I have this child that God has given me the privilege to be a mother to. And I have to make something out of myself to be an example for my child. And if the music industry or the in entertainment industry that I was in before wasn't it, then God, what is? So God helped me. And um, that was my prayer to him. I, and, and I, I took a workshop. So I, so fast forward a little bit. So now I'm in, you know, I have my beautiful daughter that I'm so head over heels for. I'm like beyond blessed, like nothing in the world could, 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 could remove me from this moment. But now I, 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 I'm, I'm going to workshops to pretty much navigate and find a way to see what exactly what it is that God, does God want me to work over here? Does he want me to do this? Does he want me to go back to school? All these options. So I started kind of finding my way. So I end up at this workshop in the workshop. I don't remember anything about the workshop. I am going to be honest. The only thing I remember about that workshop was this. Your kids will go as far as the mother's education in the home. It was like the biggest reality check for me because I only went to high school. And because I was always navigated and encouraged by the arts, I stopped my education at high school. And I said, so my daughter is going to pretty much, the stats say that my daughter is going to pretty much just finish high school and that's it. And I, I didn't want that. I said, oh, absolutely not. So I said, I have to go back to school because I need to pretty much be the example for her. So that's when I enrolled into Valley College, and that was when, when my journey started. So when you came to Valley, what was the dream? Like, what were, what did you think your major was going to be? What did you think your goal was going to be? I, again, I didn't know. It was, uh, it was, it was in faith. I said, you know, God, teach me how to be, you know, the woman that you've called me to be. Teach me how to be a mother to this beautiful baby and. Teach me how, teach me, teach me everything. Like I need to know everything from the bottom. And, um, I took, I took a counseling class, which was one of my, one of my first classes at Valley took a counseling class and I took an assessment, um, which is honestly one of the best classes that I could have took in at Valley was the counseling class to pretty much find my way and find my, find my gifts, find my strengths and to find exactly where it is that I need to go. And once I took that assessment, I realized that, um, people was some, one of my strengths to be able to uh, counsel people, talk to people, uh, encourage people, inspire people. And it was always, um, it was always a field along those lines. So I said, okay, well, I could be a nurse. I said, oh gosh, I hate blood. I'm going to faint. I don't like doing that. So I said, definitely something in the medical field is not, is not something that is in my, is in my cup of tea because I'm not built for that stuff. So I started doing my research and then sociology and, um, you know, counseling and teacher, all that, all those things popped into place and pretty much like that's where I'm headed. So what's your, Oh, go ahead, Scott. 
I was, I was just going to ask to step back for a second with all the different you know community colleges in the greater Los Angeles area. Why Valley College, Marty? I I believe it was the closest to my home um, at the time, and and I said, you know what, something that's close and convenient. And I really didn't. Um, I didn't do my research. I really didn't. I said, I'm, I'm going to go to this college. I'm going to go to this college. I said, you know what? I'm going to go to the first college that I go to because it was like, it was, it was, I kind of did it like out of desperation. Like whatever college accepts me is the college that I'm going to go to. Um, I, I would like to say that I had the perfect roadmap of life and I had it all figured out and I knew exactly what college I was going to and I knew how much I was. No, this is literally out of faith, like a seed that was planted in faith. And that, that's that's why I ended up at Valley College. So when you started at Valley, how would, how was your first classes once you started um, taking your major classes and your math classes and stuff? Oh, gosh, it was um, it got harder and harder and harder and harder. And not only because the academics were harder, but also, you know, my daughter got older and, you know, I started, you know, having to navigate and being a wife, having to be a full time mom and navigating, um, you know, I have to look for employment, I have to work and provide for my child. Um, you know, it, you know, my, my husband is working full time. So I'm pretty much functioning like a single mom. Um, I would like yeah, California is very expensive. So you know, you have to have two free jobs to kind of make ends meet sometimes. And that's something that I had to like, learn how to do because I didn't know how to do that. I just knew that Hey, smile in front of a camera, do a couple dances and, you know, get paid a thousand dollars for five minutes. Like that's what I knew how to do. So to having to go to the complete other side of life was something that I had to learn and I was willing to do. I mean, I, I believe that I always, I mean, I always know that I might've not been qualified for every job that I have, that I have came across and even being a student full-time, I, I don't feel like I ever qualified for that as many tears as I shed. I definitely didn't qualify for that. But what I do know is that my determination always moved mountains. And that's something that got a gift that God's given me. And my determination would never give up. And that's the only thing that I kind of kept holding on to. Like I might not be qualified to be a student or to have this job or to do this or to do that, but I have determination and my determination will succeed. So in terms of like jobs, like what kind of jobs were you doing? I was doing, um, like I was doing like small, you know, I was working, I was working at church. Um, you know, I was part of the ministry at church. I was a worship leader. Um, you know, I, I, I always found myself like I did administration and I started working a uh, part-time for the church. I did administration for the pastor, which I was again, blessed to even learn how to do. I didn't know how to do that. So thankful for that. And then, um, an opportunity opened up where I was uh, a CalWork student. And what that means is, um, I I became part of um, part of Gain, and again, I don't know if anybody knows that, but it uh, part of CalWorks and part of um, the welfare line, part of uh, part of uh, single moms going back to school and that need a helping hand, um, part of uh, the Gain program that encourages you and shows you how to go back to college and you know supports you with. Uh, with the case manager and, you know, kind of encourages you that way. I was, again, I was a first time generation college student. Nobody taught me the roadmap on how to, how to be this, how to be this student, how to, how to navigate through college. College wasn't for people like us. College was for the people on the Hills. College was for, you know, the people over there that already have doctor degrees and, you know, can do that kind of stuff. I was on the other side, like the people that, you know, are creative and the people that can do that. So the jobs that I found, you know, I never qualified for them. So CalWorks was a part of a program that I was a part of and I had to turn my papers in. I had to pretty much show them my schedule and make help as kind of, sort of like a counselor kind of showing you how to be a student, a successful college student. So when I um, went to go and turn in my paperwork to pretty much letting them know that I'm having good grades, you know, my teachers, you know, are proud of me the director saw me and she asked me who I was. And she's like, who are you? Like, what's your name? What are your grades looking like? Because I see something inside of you that is successful. And she didn't know my story at all. All she saw was 
a student that was, uh, that, that had a dream. That's all she saw. She just, and, and she, she brought me into her office and I sat down with her and she told, she asked me what my dreams were. What are your goals? And, um, and I said, I want to be the best version of myself for my daughter and for my family. And I want to help others. And I want to, um, I want to make a difference in the community. And that's all she needed to hear. And she hired me on the spot. And she said, you're the type of person that I want on my team. And I worked for the, I worked for CalWorks for three years. I'm sorry, two and a half. And my whole entire journey that I was at Valley College, I worked on, on campus and I, I, I went to school full time. And then who interviewed, oh, go, go ahead, Scott. I was just going to ask, was the director Ellie Ravani? That's the director, Ellie Ravani, and is literally one of the most brilliant, one of the most amazing people in my whole entire story. Uh, she is a phenomenal boss, but she is also a phenomenal human being. And she is, um, I mean, I, I really don't, I don't think that I'll ever find another boss like her. She is, um, she is so encouraging and she's so inspiring and she doesn't care about your fall. She doesn't care about where you've been. She doesn't even care about where you're at. She all, all she wants to know is where do you want to go and how do I help you get there? And that is, it, it, it was, it was so inspiring because even till this day, she's never, she has never, ever cared about my past and where I've came from. Never. And to me, from a person that wanted to close that chapter, it was very inspiring that she helped me focus on just looking forward and not looking backwards. And she's really, she's a, she's a brilliant, a brilliant human being. You know, I was, I was going to say the same thing. That sure sounds like Ellie. Uh, I've heard about her interview. Uh, I've heard that she'll take a student in and have a real conversation about who you want to be and where you want to go. And then she says, let's find something that fits you then. Um, she, she, yes. whenever I see her, she says, you know, John, when your when your son's ready to come to Valley college, you come We're I'm going to interview him. I'm going to, we're going to find out what he wants. We're going to find a place for him. And she yes. just says, is that pretty much what it is? Yeah, she is. She is really, a, a, that's exactly what she is. And you know what? She never treats you like she's the boss. Like she's never, she always like, if you call her boss or you call her any type of authority figure, she says, no, 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 no we're in this together. Like she, she refuses, she refuses for you to look at her as a higher authority, authority figure, which I always tell her, like, as much as you don't want to be the boss, you are the boss. But she's like, no, 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 we're in this together. I can, she always assures everybody on her team. She always made like, I mean, if, if, if you want to look at it at a, at a scale, like the janitor versus the director, she will always even make the janitor feel so empowered that that empowers you of, of the training that you receive, that you're just watching like all this, like, wow, she, she lifts up everyone, everybody. And that is, and that's why everybody loves her. Like everybody that's ever worked for her, love her, love her to pieces. They'll come back to, um, they'll come back for her. And, um, I'm, I'm very just thankful to have, to have, to have worked alongside with her. I'm very thankful. Yeah, big, big shout out to Ellie. Um, as you said, she's one of the brightest lights on campus and in the community. And it's great to hear um, how, how she had such a big impact on, on your story. Yes. Um, so, so you're working at, at CalWorks, this you know, amazing opportunity to, to work with Ellie, uh, working through your classes. Um, what were some other significant experiences for you at Valley? Did you start to have other connections with other professors? Did you encounter any hardship or obstacle with your studies that you overcame oh, if so God. how did that happen oh yes oh yes oh yes every i feel like every semester was so tough um well i definitely uh, i i met a lot of amazing professors amazing professors that pretty much speak life into you as hard as the classes like they i i learned that through my journey as difficult as it was and mr uh, mr Kawhi being one of them that they do want you to succeed. Like there, it's not so much like, okay, great, awesome grade, but it's more of, you know, they're willing to work with you and they're willing to help you. They're willing, like they're, I feel like all the professors that I was, that, that I got the opportunity 
and the blessing to be in their class, they all, all, every single one of the professors was rooting for me. And I, and I, and I take, I take that personal because it's my story, but I know that they were not only rooting for me. I know that they're rooting for all their students. And I saw it firsthand, even the ones that are slacking, even the ones that are delinquent, even the ones that are a default like me, that I, you know, that I didn't do great on every single class. Let's be real. Um, like I, even those, those, the ones that are like struggling, like I was, they still want, they're still pulling through for you. Like they still want you to win. So, um, I, I really, I, I'm blessed that I got that type of training and that type of education and that type of inspiration, um, to just be where I'm at today. So how were you able to split your time between being a mom and a student and a wife? Like what was, what were the, I guess the tensions that happened with sort of being three different people? <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it. Um, wow. It's um, a lot of tears. I mean, really a lot of tears. Uh, you have to navigate making dinner for your family. At the same time, you have to stay up till three o'clock in the morning, you know, doing math homework or, you know, doing your English uh, paper. And it's tough. You know, it's tough and you still have to like wake up, put a smile on your face and you still have to be positive enough to be able to help others at your at your full time job. You know, it's 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 tough. But I think the end goal of always looking what what always pulled me through, honestly, like as crazy as my life was, was God is having having that relationship and that connection with Jesus to be able to say, you know what, I'm going crazy right now. Let me just stop. Let me stop and pray. Let me stop and go to church. Let me stop and worship. Let me stop and recharge. And that was my recharge. That was my, my, my spirituality and my connection, my relationship with God is what got me through. And always knowing that I'm not doing this just for myself. I'm doing this for my daughter. I'm doing this for my family. And this is something that I really do want because if, I, if it's not something that, if it's something that wasn't in God's plans, the door was never open. And if this is something that I didn't need to do, then it wouldn't be happening the way it was. Like I was so, con it, I received so much confirmation every single time, even through my struggles, that this is where I'm supposed to be. But I just kept fighting, just fighting and fighting and fighting sleepless nights. My daughter was sick. You know, she was sick and I would have to wake up at six in the morning to pretty much be on time for my 745 class. Um, you know, it was, you know, it, it was a constant fight, but I refused to give up the fight. I refused. Yeah. I think the hardest part for me when I was going back to school with little kids was that you never could. It was, it was like having a, a time bomb that yeah. you just didn't know. You couldn't count on your time. Right. You're yeah. studying, studying. I, I have two hours here and then someone's diaper explodes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or someone throws up or someone gets sick and you're like, but wait a second. I needed those two hours. Right. And I think exactly. that was always sort of the stressful thing for me where you couldn't you couldn't book your time. No. Right. It, maybe I have two hours if nothing terrible happens. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And then I had and then throughout, you know, the, my my journey. I had my second kid. I had my second, my, my son, which, um, I was literally, I was like, I, 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 I don't even know like how I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So I said, all right, I graduate in May. I'm sorry. I graduate in June, which was June 4th. And I had my son May 11th. I was at, I was at my, in the hospital bed and I mind you, I had a C-section. So I was in the hospital bed and I, I was taking my final the day I had my son, I was taking my final that night. And, um, and it was, it was, it was, it was erratic. And of course I didn't score, you know, a perfect score because I, I didn't, but I, I passed, I passed with a C plus. And wait, I, wait, you I, gave birth and then took your final? I took, yeah, I, 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 exactly. I literally had my son May 11th and May 11th night. I was like, it was like at midnight. I, I, I rested for a little bit. I woke up 
I fed him and I did my final. And I was like, oh my gosh. I said, God. And I, of course, another prayer, another prayer. I said, Lord, get me through this, please. I said, I and don't know what. And, and, and your teacher didn't let you off? She didn't give you an extra, or he didn't give you an extra few days? She did. She actually did. She actually gave me an extra few days. And, but, but she gave me an extra few days to turn my papers in because my papers were going to be late and I was not going to have, they, they were, they were just going to be late. So she allowed me to do my final and she allowed me to complete and turn in my papers, um, within a certain time. But, um, it, it was crunch time. Like, it wasn't like I had you know, I didn't have any extra privileges just because, you know, it was none of that. It was like, okay, listen, you have a little bit of extra time. However, get it done. I'm like, I got you. You got me. I got you. Let's do this. And literally I just, I did it. I, and again, God's grace. I did it. Oh, every time I have a student like you terrifies me because I've had three women go into labor during finals. <laughs> And they'll they'll look at me, and they always sit in the same place in front, and they'll look at me, and they'll go, Dr. Koa, I go, what? She goes, I'm in labor. I'm like, okay, go to go to the hospital. Right? And they'll go, like, I'm finishing my final. I'm like, no, just go to the hospital. We'll, we'll, we'll consider it fine. And she goes, I'm getting my A. And I'll say, I'll give you an A. Just go to the hospital. Yeah, exactly. And then they go, like, I'm earning my A. And then – they will finish it, they'll hand it to me, and then they'll go to the hospital. So every time I have someone who is close, my final makes you go into labor. I can't <laughs> handle yeah. that anymore. It just, it wrecks me. And every one of those women have gotten an A. Uh, and they know. will not leave. It's, I want to drive them to the hospital. Yeah, it's really, it's really a crazy journey. It really is. And I just recommend for anyone who's listening, Try not to have babies during college. It's not fun. And it's not easy. Um, take it from someone who was doing her final the day her son was born. I repeat, don't have babies. Get. <laughs> or take me because I'm a softy. I would have I would have just said go. Just go. <laughs> All you have to do is fake a pregnancy with me. If you fake labor in my class, I'm probably give you an A. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So, so just incredible. Yeah. So you, you said that you took the final on May 11th and then you graduated the following month in June? I graduated in June. Oh, no, I was only three weeks apart, actually. So it was uh, in June, uh, June 4th and I had to speak on commencement. But mind you, uh, I said that I had a C-section, so I was cut open, you know, from my belly, from my midsection. So when I was walking, you know, all the, you know, everyone looked very beautiful, you know, everyone looked very fancy and everybody had their heels on all the, all the ladies, beautiful California weather has beautiful heels on. And I have my, my flat sneakers because I I'm still in surgery. Like I, I still have my stitches, you know, I, I, I have to get up in front of class of 2018 and speak on behalf of our class. And I have to give the most honest and important speech of my life. Um, at this point, and um, I have to pretty much deliver. So, um, yeah. So again, um, it happened, and I and I was very blessed by it, and people were too. So, how do you become a commencement speaker? I've always wondered. I actually auditioned, which I didn't know. Um, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know the process because you know I'm new to college, so I ask a lot of questions of college. I may be borderline annoying. But, you know, I'm that student. Um, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to try to learn as much as I can learn and try to take as much as I can from this experience. So I, um, on campus, somebody, somebody had told me that um, you should speak on graduation. People would, like, you know, appreciate your, your honesty. And I said, how would you do that? How do, you, how do people do that? And I asked, some, I asked one of my, uh, my, my, my colleagues uh, at CalWorks, and they said, "Oh, you just auditioned. Why don't you go to the um? Why don't you go to to the, to the business office and um? Not the business office. It was the office upstairs, and I forget right now what it is. But it was one of the um, the offices upstairs in and the where, where the business uh, office is. And she said, "Go find out information." So I went there and I said, "How do I speak at commencement?" And they said, "Oh, you just do an audition and you know here fill out this paper and you know when auditions pop up." you can come and, you know, we'll audition you. And I had to speak in front of a board. Um, and Mr. Brian Chesko, 
was there, which he's one of the speech uh, speech uh, uh, professors at Valley College, which I also, which I took and I ate, I got an A at, so shout out to Brian Tesco, he's awesome. Um, and then, so I spoke in front of, you know, the board and, um, and they said, you know what, uh, a week later, two weeks later, they called me and they said, we would like for you to speak on behalf of the class of 2018. So what was it like to walk up to that crowd? Well, I guess you've been in front of crowds, but how was yeah. this like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was probably the most important stage that I've ever been on, um, next to church really like next to uh, being a worship leader at church, uh, singing for church. That was definitely one of the, uh, the second most, the most important stage that I, that I have ever been on. And this was, um, and the reason why I say that is because it was the most honoring stage to be on. And after the struggle and the story that I've been through, and it was also looking into the faces of the people that, are going to be next in line to leadership and literally in the community and people that were, that had same struggles like me, like myself and people that, that um, are first time generation college student, like myself, people that can relate to my story. And I, I, I felt honored to be able to just, to speak amongst them and to sit amongst them and to, and to just, to just celebrate amongst them. It was, it was an honor for me. Wow. What, so what, Marty, what happened um, after that? So you give this speech at commencement, you walk across the stage, you know, this, this amazing milestone and accomplishment now that you've achieved. Uh, what, what was your next step? My next step was to, um, my, you know, just to pursue my dreams. And uh, Ellie was there that day uh, that I graduated and she looked at me and she said, you don't stop here. And I said, absolutely not. As fearful as that conversation was, I said, no, I'm not going to stop here. And um, I enrolled into CSUN and, um, and only to not continue at CSUN. I said, I, because you have to be physically at CSUN to pretty much pursue your degree. And that was something my reality did not allow that for me to happen. I had my son. Um, now at this point, my, my four-year-old daughter, I'm sorry, my, my, yeah, she was turning four, um, my four-year-old daughter, I had an infant and I had my full-time job and, you know, now I have two ba now I have two babies. I can't go to school full-time. So I said, you know what? I have to find another way. I cannot give up now. I will not give up now. I refuse to give up. I have to pursue. So another prayer. <laughs> and there we go. And literally I decided to do online my bachelor's degree online. And that was the only way that I was able to do it. And then I literally started working at an elementary school to pretty much make ends meet because now I'm no longer on campus. Um, now I'm no longer working for CalWORKs. Now I'm not, no longer working work study. Now I have to find another job. So I found um, an elementary school down my street, which was a beautiful, also beautiful pack of people, a beautiful experience. And I got a lot of experience at the elementary school as far as teaching. I became a reading specialist there. And on top of that, that's when I decided to continue to do, continue to pursue education, continue to pursue my degree online. And I found LAPU, which is Los Angeles Pacific University. And that offered that and offered um, uh, my schedule and work around that. And literally I graduate this month on the 19th. Um, and I really couldn't be more happy that I struggled so much, but I cannot be any more happy, happy or thankful to God that I am here. What's your degree in? My degree is in education. Okay. And then are you doing a teacher credential after this, or are you going to focus on being a reading specialist? Um, well, actually, I actually moved to Texas right before the pandemic. Right before the pandemic, I moved, so I actually ended up leaving the elementary school, which I was very heartbroken um, to leave California. And now I am a full-on Texan with cowgirl boots saying "yeehaw." <laughs> so, um, yeah. So now I'm I'm here. I'm I'm in Texas, and um, I decided to focus full time on to it, finishing my degree, to finishing getting it out of the way, and I am going to pursue. I'm going to pursue. I am going to pursue education, but I'm I'm going to pursue counseling. 
Unfortunately, as we were saying our goodbyes, we were cut off by the technology. We want to thank Marty for sh sharing her amazing story, and we wish her well at graduate school. Thank you for listening to our podcast.